Okay, this is an audio test. If you guys can hear the audio, please let me know, and then we'll get started as soon as possible. Just let me know in the chat if you guys can hear me. We will wait just a few minutes, just let a couple more people jump in. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties, folks. I appreciate you guys sticking around with me and being patient with me as I deal with these issues. Thanks, guys. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started, guys. I appreciate you guys and your nice comments. I got a, a chance to check some of those. I know there's always going to be one sour apple in the barrel <laughs> that gets frustrated. But if you've never tried live streaming, I mean, I've got a lot of things I've got going on here. I'm running three or four different cameras and my audio. So it is a challenge, and it is not a piece of cake. It definitely um, takes a lot of work. So um, if you can uh, send me a text, Karen, to make sure that uh, you can hear me, that would be great. And then I will go ahead and I'll proceed with the stream. Um, today, we are going to be talking about spiders and whether they are really as bad as people think they are. And in all honesty, um, you guys probably already know the answer that I'm going to say. But let's, uh, let's jump into the video before the wind blows me away because it's a little windy here in Idaho. So hopefully the wind isn't too bad for us. It's a little crazy right now, but again, thank you guys for your patience with the technical difficulties. We'll go ahead and we'll jump into all this. I kind of started going into all this a second ago with you guys. Uh, I thought you guys actually being with me. <laughs> so uh, here's an overview of what we'll be talking about. So um, we're going to be talking about what is a spider? How is it a spider? Dis yeah, excuse me, <laughs> tripping on my words there. How is a uh, spider defined? What is their diet? Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the silk that they make and venoms. Then we're going to talk about first aid in case you are bitten by a spider. And then we're going to talk about medi medically significant spiders in the USA and how to deal with spiders or handle them if that's something that you want to or need to do, uh, depending on your situation. And then we'll have a conclusion. And uh, by the end of this, you're going to get to meet one of my awesome friends. Her name is Ghost. So I'll be showing her off live to you guys um, probably for the first time for most of you guys. If you guys have questions as this is going, I've got some help from Karen. Thank you for your help, Karen. Um, she's going to be watching the chat, and at the end of my stream, I will take questions. So I'll have her be looking for questions and keeping note of those so she can send me all the questions at the end. I will not be watching the chat, so if any issues arrive and I have to look at my phone, that's me just checking to make sure everything's working because I can't watch the chat. I've got to just keep on going with the show. So it's a one man show. We got to do it all right. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into this. The first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to 
talk about uh, what it is that defines a spider. So let me grab my pencil here. I've kind of got my stuff scattered all over the place with those issues trying to catch up. So I am by no means uh, a very great artist, but we are going to try to uh, try to do a little bit of art for you guys. Let's see how this goes. Let's see if we can pull this up here. All right, there we go. There you go. You can still see me. So the first thing I want to talk about is just the different body parts of spiders and kind of what they're composed of or how they're built. So spiders have two main body parts. They have the abdomen. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the end here. There's the abdomen. And then they also have the cephalothorax. So with insects, they have abdomens, thoraxes, and then they also have a head. With spiders, the head and the thorax have basically kind of fused. They're, they're basically the same part. So, and you have this next part that's called the cephalothorax. So that, that includes the head and this part here. So we'll actually just divide it up for you guys. Hopefully that wind is not too loud for you guys. And they have varying number of eyes, obviously, uh, different spiders. I'll just give this one four eyes. So I've got four eyes, right? The, back in high school, they used to tease me. That's okay. Um, so spiders, all spiders will have eight legs. We're going to do our best here to draw some nice legs on this spider. Wow, they definitely would be much more segmented than this. Okay, so there's our eight... Uh, some of our legs, we've almost got them all right. Definitely not the best artist. <laughs> so they have their eight legs. And then they also have, up here in the front, they have these palps that they use to help process food, or they can be for um, reproductive purposes in some of the males um, of different species. And then they have fangs. So that's your basic general layout of a spider. And spiders have exoskeletons. You know, they're not, um, they're not vertebrates, they're invertebrates. So they have exoskeletons. And uh, that's basically how you would define a spider. Um, so what do spiders eat? This is something important for us to decide whether they're good or bad. For the most part, spiders eat insects or other arthropods. So, so that's, that's a good thing in my opinion. Some of them will even feed on nectar. They're finding there's new studies that are being done and there's evidence suggesting that they'll actually feed on nectar and flowers, which is kind of interesting. Um, some of them will even feed on other animals um, if, they're, if they're big enough. Um, that would mostly be like mice and small birds, maybe frogs um, for some of these larger tarantulas or, or large spider species. But a cool thing about spiders is they can generally live for months without food. So they don't have to be eating a ton of things in order to survive, they can stay stagnant and sit still for a long time and still be totally fine. And a key thing to know about spiders is that their aggression is very low. I have never in my whole life met a spider that I would consider aggressive. Even larger spiders um, like tarantulas and things like that, I've never really seen any that are aggressive. They may get defensive uh, depending on how you treat them, um, but um, I've never seen them really aggressive. I, I've never seen that. I think that's a myth that folks like to try and spread. And a nice thing about webs that's interesting about their diet is having spiders around can be extra helpful because in webs they can kill more insects than they will actually eat. So that's a good thing about spiders that are building webs like the one shown here. They're going to be eating um killing more than they're actually eating. So that's a good thing for us as humans. And, and they definitely do keep insects um, in check a lot. So that's a good thing for us. And I know a lot of you guys are going to say, oh, it's the insect hunter. Why are you talking about spiders? Because we as entomologists often will work with spiders and other arthropods as well. That's just part of our work. I mean, uh, one of my colleagues, he's an entomologist and he works with ticks. That's, all, that's his main focus. I know they're not insects, but there's not a lot of people that would say, I'm an arachnologist. Maybe they would, but there's a, um, a lot of us just have degrees in entomology because that's kind of where we start because that's where the money is at. So this is a crab spider here um, just uh, feeding on an insect. I wanted to show you that really quick. And then here's one kind of in a flower. 
and uh, these types will be in flowers and you know they could be feeding on nectar as well so that's something new and interesting that scientists are slowly discovering about spiders is that they feed on other things too now spiders will produce silk as all of us know they'll make webs that's a super obvious way that we see it but they'll also use them to line their nests and this spider here is making kind of a funnel that it's using for its nest in order to get in and out but they also use that um, to help them sometimes with hunting to build egg sacs and uh, those are used for other things. They also can use them as parachutes. I think I'm gonna, um, I think I'm gonna shut my garage here. I know that that wind's getting a little loud. I wanted a little more light, um, so I might shut that here in just a minute. So if you hear a loud rumbling sound, you'll know what it is. But that means that the wind is going away. Now let's talk about venom. So this is the most important thing I wanted to talk to people about with spiders and when people think that they're evil. And, and my wife, she thinks they are evil. You should see when she sees a spider, the reaction is night and day between me and my wife. It is very, very different um, what we end up doing when we see them. So the key thing about the venom with spiders, so yes, almost all spiders produce venom, but that doesn't mean it's all toxic to humans. So think about venom as a very precious chemical that's very expensive and hard to make. Um, that's how we have to see venom. So for spiders and for other creatures that have venom, using up their venom on a human is probably a waste. Um, they're probably not going to be able to kill you. They are probably not trying to feed on you. I mean, I've, I've never known of any spiders trying to actually feed on humans other than uh, false ones in sci-fi movies and stuff. But they, they want to save that to protect themselves. That is their last resort um, tool in order to protect themselves. So that's important to remember. So there was a study that was done by a Marshall D. McHugh. I think this one, um, I can't remember where it was done at. I think it was here somewhere in America. But anyways, he looked at American pit vipers and he would get them to use up their venom and then he compared their metabolism. So what that means is as they were using up their venom, he would see how much energy they needed in order to continue to survive. So he found that it increased their metabolism by 11%. So what that means is that when these pit vipers were using their venom, they were having to eat more food in order to survive. They had to get more energy because venom is very expensive and not easy to make. So what that could translate for spiders is, you know, some of these spiders can go for a month without eating. But let's say that you poke a spider and then it bites you and it uses up its venom. Now it's losing four or five days potentially if we're using that 11% number from these vipers, which it could be very different with spiders, but we'll just use that in as an example. But that could equal that they have four or five days in which they are going to have to eat sooner. So they have to eat sooner or they're also going through this period where they're trying to replenish their venom. So they're very exposed and vulnerable. They don't want to use that venom unless they absolutely have to. That is like their last ditch effort uh, for the most part with animals that have venom. It's just very expensive. It's not easy to make, but it is uh, powerful and a good defense mechanism for spiders. So that's something important to keep in mind. So what do you do if you are bitten by a spider? So the first thing you need to do, and this sounds kind of counterintuitive, you'd think, oh, this thing just bit me. I'm going to smash it and crush it and kill it. The first thing you need to do is you need to capture that spider and you want to keep that spider for identification. And the key with that is, is that a lot of doctors try to identify spider bites and they cannot do it. It is very difficult to do. All of the entomologists that I've ever talked with, including veterinary entomologists, they are not confident at identifying spider bites um, without seeing the spider. It's just so much easier to do if we can physically see the spider then we'll be able to know what the species is. It's just very difficult to look at a bite and say what it is. So capture that spider if you're really worried about it. And we'll talk about the ones you want to identify anyways here in a minute. But hopefully this doesn't happen to you. But you also would uh, want to put a cold pack on it um, or ice, an ice bag on there to kind of uh, cool that down. And then you can elevate your arm. So if it's bitten my arm, I can elevate my arm in the air to kind of um, just keep that up and keep the 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 blood um, from flowing there so much, causing issues, and then using soap and water. And this is all coming from the CDC, the Centers uh, for D Disease Control. So they, they give a lot of these recommendations. And another thing to think about too, which everybody should just have this in general, no matter what, 
is getting tetanus shots. The CDC also said that um, spiders can carry around tetanus spores potentially. I don't know if that's super common, but the CDC recommends you should have tetanus shots just because um, spiders could be carrying around spores of tetanus. So um, something to kind of think about, get your tetanus shots, folks. Uh, vaccines are awesome. Hopefully we have one here uh, soon for uh, the coronavirus. Um, so now let's talk about America's most wanted spiders. So we have two spiders here in the United States that are medically significant. And when I say that, what I mean is that um, these are ones that um, there's scientific data backing and showing that they, uh, that they cause significant harm to humans. And uh, the amount of deaths is actually not super high, but these are ones that the CDC deems as significant. So when folks, so part of my job uh, as an extension educator is folks will bring insects and spiders and things to me at my office. And when people bring me spiders, I love to get spiders, not just because I like spiders, but because it's really easy to do. If someone brings me a spider and they're worried about it, what I will do is I will compare it with these two species. So the ones we have here is we've got the brown recluse here, and then we've got a black widow spider. Now here in Idaho, I don't have the brown recluse, so I don't even have to worry about that one so much unless someone's been traveling or bringing them in or something. But I'll, all that I'll focus on is the black widow spider. Here, here in Idaho, this is the only species that is medically significant. Now there are obviously some, some, some exceptions to that, but um, unless you have allergies and you have a history of allergic reactions to different toxins and things like that, like bee stings and stuff, then you're probably not going to have a problem. So if you do have those types of issues or underlying health conditions, or you're very old, or you're very you're very young, you're a you're a child, then then it could be a concern. And even with these ones, those are the people that are most likely to die from bites from these two species. So it's really easy for me to you know handle that when someone brings one of those in. Oh, let's keep that going there. When someone brings one of those in, because all I have to do is say, is this a black widow spider? If it's not, then I say, this species you have here is, and I'll try my best to identify it. But even if I can't identify it, as long as I know it's not a black widow, I'll just say, this is not a medically significant species. It, it is beneficial. It's helpful. You need to let this go. It can, uh, it can help, uh, help kill insects that could get in your garden or cause you harm as a human. So um, that's what I like to do. So um, and the brown recluse is only found in some parts of the USA. I think I already said that, but just in case, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that to you guys. So let's talk first about the brown recluse spider. So they're about the size of a quarter. And the key way to identify these spiders is if you look on their back, there's a tiny little, um, it looks like a fiddle. So let me, let me see if I can zoom in on here. We'll see how cooperative my iPad is going to be. All right. So if you look right in here, let's see if we can get it to draw, right in there, there's that little fiddle. That's, that's what you're looking for. These are sometimes also called fiddleback uh, spiders. So this is what you want to look for is that right there. They're about the size of a quarter. And you'll also want to just check if you find one of these, you think um, you'll want to check to see if they're even native to your area because it could be something, something else. But it's always good to uh, send a picture to a professional or contact your local extension agent or extension educator or a local entomologist to help you identify. Um, let's go ahead and we'll jump out of that there. So let's see if we can resume this. But um, these guys, they're called a recluse because they're actually really shy as a spider from what I've read. I've never encountered one myself. Um, they, they're very reclusive, which just means that they like to hide and they do not like to be out in the open. So they're, they're pretty they're pretty skittish and they really don't want to have to bite unless they absolutely have to use that venom. But here you see a quarter, um, that's about the size they are, but their bite can cause necrosis, which is basically like dying skin cells. So um, imagine, you know, twice that size, about the size of a silver dollar. So, you know, about this big, um, it can cause uh, this decay and, and this, this basic rotting of the skin and necrosis. So they, they in my opinion, are a little bit scary. Um, uh, more scary than the, the black widow spiders, in my opinion, because they can just leave you with these huge chunks of skin that are just kind of corroding away. So that might be kind of making some of you guys lean to, yes, they're bad, they're evil. But this is just um, one species out of all the thousands of species that we have here in the United States. 
Um, so that's those. Um, next week we will be talking at the same time. We'll do a live stream. Um, it will be on April 30th at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So next week we'll be talking about Black Widow, so I'm not going to talk much about them. I have a Black Widow. We will be showing her off. Her name is Natasha, so I'm excited to let you guys meet her hopefully next week if you guys will join us. So let's keep on going. Now, a lot of people ask me about hobo spiders because especially here in Idaho and the Pacific Northwest, uh, folks really worry about these and folks really believe that they're, they're highly toxic, but the CDC no longer lists them as a significant medical species. Um, there, there were some tests that were done a while back and those tests have been redone and the evidence does not support those tests. So um, there, were, there was the belief that these were highly toxic and causing a lot of damage to humans, but um, the evidence has suggested otherwise. So they are not under the CDC's dangerous spiders list. So not to be of big concern. All right, so now let's just talk about why people get so scared and are afraid of spiders. And I thought this was really interesting as I was looking up this study um, about why people are afraid of spiders. So um, there were some folks that did some studies in London and different areas, and you can find links to these different studies. I'm going to have that in the description of the video. Um, once I finish, I'll, I'll plug all those details in from the other one. Um, but anyways, they found that females are much more likely to be scared than males which matches up with my channel. I mean, on my channel, I get really high percentages of views from males um, and lower percentages from females. But you ladies out there that love spiders, you guys are more than welcome to be here. I'm excited to have you guys with us and, and learning about spiders and hopefully getting you guys more used to the fact that they are not all evil. Um, they found that they asked kids, this was interesting, they did a survey with kids and they asked kids what their greatest fear out of anything was and their greatest fear was uh, spiders. That was their greatest fear. So I think that's really interesting that with kids, uh, that's a big thing. And it seems that a lot of this is related to families and how people react in your family to spiders. Um, so for example, when I, when I find spiders in my house, I'll catch them and then I'll let them go outside. And my son, um, he sees that. So the way that he's going to react is going to be different than someone where um, their parents are screaming and shouting and my son gets very confused when my my uh, wife sees spiders because she freaks out and he doesn't know what to do because it, he he likes to pick them up so he's always picking them up and scaring my wife at this point so I guess I have a little more influence on him we'll see with my other boys how they do but there's also some genetic factors in play they found that um, there's there's just this inherent um, fear of of spiders and a lot of different people. It's just a genetic thing that's part of us. But you can overcome that. You can condition yourself to not be afraid. As you guys saw in one of my other videos, I was very scared of holding a wolf spider. Now I pick it up like it's willy nilly and uh, I, I probably could get bitten sometime, but I don't really care because I just, I've gotten myself so used to it that it's just like, eh, whatever. You get used to things, so you just keep doing it. And they found that people thought that people weren't so scared of the actual venom of spiders. They were just afraid of the way that they moved and how they're so skittish and their movement. For some reason, their um, their erratic movement just scares people. That's kind of interesting that the way that they move, for some reason, that just doesn't rub our brains quite right as humans. So kind of interesting. They're, they're very unpredictable. You know, they'll move and then they'll stay still. So now we'll talk about those of you that... Um, for those of you that really just don't like spiders, I just wanted to give some tips of how you can get rid of them or deal with them. So um, obviously, you know, the the best thing you can do is trying to, and, you know, I'm going to give the other side of this coin too. Trust me, I, I actually want to support spiders, but I know there's lots of people that don't like them. So I try to give tips on both sides so folks can uh, make their own decisions. But hopefully you'll support the spiders and not uh, treat them as guilty victims, right? Um so what you can do is you can remove debris, so getting rid of things like this uh, pile of wood, getting rid of habitat, rubble, things like that. Those are places that spiders really like because they can hide in there and they can live there. You know, having tall grass around your house, even weeds and things can actually sometimes be beneficial because spiders will use those um, as, their, as their home for a while. Um, so you can also caulk um, your... Um, 
well, I guess I'm trying to think of a better word because caulk might not be the best word. You, you need to just seal your house really well. If you're worried about them getting in your house, you need to make sure all your windows are sealed well. You've got good weather strips in your doors and entrances into your house, not holes in your house. I mean, there's all sorts of holes and cracks and things in people's houses. And, you know, it's a ton of work. It's like, do you want to have to fix that? You can, and that will help keep the amount of spiders coming in and out down. But, um, that's one thing you can do. You can also use pesticides, but I warn people about using pesticides because most of the time, these pesticides that are getting sprayed for spiders, they're not going to last that long. You'll spray it and it will kill a bunch of spiders. But now that you've killed all those spiders, now you're going to have problems with all sorts of uh, insect pests that could get into your house, um, you know, like bed bugs or other things. Um, you don't want insects causing problems so when you go out there and you spray like crazy and you kill all the spiders you're going to create some problems with uh, other insects and pests themselves so i i strongly am against using pesticides if possible uh, but for some folks folks they just cannot handle it so they just have to do that also i really like you know i've got this tiny little image here it's hard to see um this pitfall trap just doing pitfall traps i love to do just to monitor and see what kind of spiders are in your yard or different areas. You can also get sticky traps. I don't like the sticky traps as much because that will kill the spiders. But if you don't care about killing them and you just want to kill a bunch, um, sticky traps are good too because you can monitor and see how many there are. The key thing with using traps is that you can see whether the numbers are going up or they're going down. Um, so that can help you make new decisions. If you start seeing the numbers go down, then um, maybe you're doing something right. If they're going up, then uh, you better be ready for more spiders and things showing up because you're seeing more in the trap. So maybe you've got to change something. You've got to clean up your yard or something um, if you're having those issues with spiders that you believe in. Okay. All right. So here's how to protect. So uh, hopefully we don't start any wars of people cleaning stuff up and then putting it back out. Oh, I don't know what's going on there. Okay. Um, so, you know, leaving places for spiders to live. Um, some studies have found that as you leave wood chips and mulch around your yard, um, those are places where spiders can live. Um, so my yard sometimes looks messy because I leave leaves, uh, leaves on the ground in certain areas. If I have bare ground, I will leave a bunch of leaves on the ground um, so that spiders can uh, have a place to live or leaving like a wood pile, things like that. Just places where spiders can live and hide and have some cover in order to protect themselves. I think that's important for us to do, um, provide them with some habitat. So um, you can also use, there's something uh, in the agricultural world called cover crops, which is where you grow your crop and then you plant something and you leave that there in the winter to leave um, something there. And that can be a place where spiders can live and not tilling the ground because when we till the ground and rip that up, yes, it, it kills a lot of things. It's killing insects and some problems, but it also kills the beneficials. So um, some of those practices we have with farming, though, I know not everybody's going to do it. Um, tilling the ground can actually cause harm to spiders and other organisms that could be beneficial and helping you out. Um, and that's besides the fact of tilling the ground can remove a ton of moisture and cause other issues, but just something to consider. It's also important, like I said before, um, you can get nectar um, that some spiders will eat. And so having flowers is a good thing um, for spiders in some cases. Just having a variety of different plants in your yard is good too. You know, there's different structures and places and habitat um, for spiders to live in. All right, so now we're going to talk about handling spiders safely. So I'm going to jump off of, well, let me just uh, share a couple quick things with you guys. Do not handle a spider unless you are 100% confident of the identification of the spider. Now, for me, it's a piece of cake. When I see a spider, I can tell if it's a black widow spider or not based on the shape, and I can tell if it's a brown recluse. You, you might have to make your own decisions. Um, if you're going to pick it up, I would definitely make sure you know what it is, um, but otherwise you can use a cup, and that's what I'm gonna show you guys. So I'm gonna show you guys two methods of how to kind of handle a spider um, and what's the best way to do that? So let's jump over here to our other camera. And I'm going to grab my spider. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I got her here. We'll go ahead and we'll put her down here. We'll let her walk around. There's that erratic movement that I'm sure you guys absolutely love. So this is, uh, her name is Ghost. She's a Carolina wolf spider like the one in my other videos. Might get a little zoom in on here on her, but uh, she's been a lot of fun. So first I'm going to just show you kind of how to get one with a cup. This is the easiest way. Obviously, most of you have probably already done this, but just in case you're new to the world of spiders, I'll kind of show you guys. So basically take your cup, and then you'll want to take something else behind this nice little recycled card. And then I'm going to try and coax her into it. That didn't really work. <laughs> she slipped underneath. Well, one thing you can do is you can just put the cup on top of the spider. So I've just got that on top of her. And then you can uh, just slip, slip the card underneath. And they should walk up on it, hopefully. Looks like we got her. And then you can take her out to safety if you're going to release her or um, get rid of it. So now I'll show you guys how to handle a spider with your bare hands. I'm going to try and get her, coax her maybe here into the middle. Let's see if we can get that focus a little better. Come here, little lady. So the thing you want to do is you'll want to stick your hand in front of the spider. You don't want the spider to bite you, obviously. So you're basically going to try and turn your hand into a limb, like a branch or something that they're just walking on. You don't want to be making any sudden movements. You want to be very careful and very gentle. So I've got my hand here ready to go. And then I'm going to use my other hand to just very gently kind of coax her this way. She kind of slipped a little bit this way. Let's get her to come back into the middle. Come here, little lady. Okay, here she is. And I've handled her so many times that she's, she's pretty chill about all this. Okay, so I've got my hand in front, and I'm getting my hand behind, and I'm just going to gently coax her. I don't really want to scare her too much. I'm just going to gently coax her. She doesn't want to go on my hand, <laughs> which they might not want to. You can just grab them, but I feel like you're much more likely to get bitten. You can just watch as she's walking. I'm just kind of sticking my hand in front of her. You might have to coax them, or if you can just find their path where they're walking, you can just stick your hand right in front and just grab onto them. And if you want to keep a hold of them and you don't want them jumping off, then always stick your hand in front of them. Always want to be keeping a path ahead of them so that you are you keep moving with them so they can stick with you. So we'll leave her in there. And I know a lot of you are worried she's going to get out, but... I already tested it earlier. She can't climb up that plastic. Um, depending on the different type of spider, um, they can and cannot walk on certain types of walls. So she hasn't been able to really climb up that super wall up to this point. So we'll see. If, if you guys see me jump away, um, jump away from the camera, then you guys will know why, because I'm watching her and I'm ready to go jump and grab her. So, so that's kind of how you would handle um, a spider. I uh, just wanted to mention and remind you guys that next week we will be doing um, the video on Black Widows. That'll be live. And I will be putting to the test what I'm saying, because I've been saying to you guys that spiders are not evil. They don't want to bite you. They don't want to waste their venom. Well, next week I'm going to put that to the test with my Black Widow spider. I've never intentionally held her, but I'm going to put that to the test um, next week on the show. So... Um, let's pull this up here. Let's pop this up. So I just wanted to, before I take you guys' questions, I just wanted to tell you guys um, that I'm very grateful. I'm grateful I have a job because right now it's just a crazy time. I'm grateful for you guys um, watching and uh, tuning into this video. And wanted to let you guys know that if you are interested in studying insects or spiders or other arthropods, um, that there are opportunities to learn more and eventually get a degree in entomology, which I'm very grateful I did because I absolutely love insects. I love animals, and it's been awesome. So there are opportunities at the University of Idaho in order to get involved with a degree like this and potentially have the chance to work with someone like me. So uh, that might be fun. might not be. Maybe you guys don't like me. <laughs> You're just on here to troll and uh, make fun of me. But if that's something you're interested in and possibly getting involved with some projects working with me on research and teaching folks about insects, spiders, and arthropods, then send me an email at jasont at uidaho.edu. If that's something you're approaching 
in the in the coming years and you're interested in possibly getting a degree in entomology, uh, make sure and send me an email. Um, and it looks like we are getting a couple questions in, so I'll take those. And uh, as I'm answering the questions, I've never done this before, so I'm going to try it with you guys. I'm going to try and feed Ghost. I haven't given her any food lately, but we're going to try and do it um, live here. I'm going to try and see if she'll eat something off of my hand. I don't know if she will. We'll see what she does. Um, and then I'll answer the question. So I've got some, got some mealworms here. I'm going to pull one out, and I'm going to put it on my hand. And we'll get Ghost onto my hand, and I'll kind of answer you guys' questions while we're doing this. Okay, got the mealworm adult here, the beetle. And we'll get Ghost over here. She's pretty chill. Oh, she's upside down. She's pretty chill. She's okay with me just picking her up. I've picked her up so many times that I just don't even care anymore. If she's going to bite me, she's going to bite me. Yep, she's running off there. Come on, little lady. There we go. Do you see that there? I don't know if she's that hungry. Okay, we got a couple questions coming in. She's standing right over that. Oh, maybe she's not that hungry. Who knows? All right, well, you guys just kind of stay there. You need to go over there, little beetle. She's probably more scared of it than thinking it's food. <laughs> okay, well, maybe she'll eat it in there. All right, here's our questions. All right, the first question is, is it okay to handle a recluse spider like a pet? I would not recommend holding a brown recluse like a pet. I'm a trained professional and I've spent a lot of time doing this. And the only reason why I'm trying to show people is that these spiders are not super aggressive, but when you're handling a spider, you never know what it's going to do. I would not want to expose myself to a bite other than the fact that I'm just trying to educate you guys and help you understand that if you will give spiders their space and be respectful, they're probably not going to bite you. They, they don't want to bite. They're usually um, not that aggressive. So I'm mostly doing this just to educate people and to put my money where my mouth is, you know, and say, hey, I, I believe these are not going to bite you, but you never know how a spider is going to react. So anytime I'm picking one up, I am putting myself at risk of getting bit. So I don't really mind, you know, handling ghosts that much because I know that her bite is not that harmful. She's, maybe she's just not in the zone right now. See, she's just running fast. She, she's not She's not super happy right now, so I don't think she's going to be eating. One cool thing I want to show you guys before I answer the next question is I want to show you guys the underside of her body. It's pretty cool. So let's see if we can get her in the middle here. And I'm going to zoom this in a little bit, see if we can get a better focus. I'd like you guys to see her upside down to see the stripe pattern. Maybe you can see it, maybe not. See those stripes? Those are really pretty, pretty looking stripes. I like those a lot. Let's see if we can get a better zoom in on her. There we go. That focus looks a little better. I don't know if she's that hungry right now. She's just like, okay. She doesn't even care about that beetle. <laughs> okay. They don't eat that often. I, I just try to give her something every few weeks. So this was really just a, a crapshoot to see if she would eat it. Uh, do you have any preserved specimens of a recluse? I do not have any brown recluse spider specimens that are preserved. Uh, we don't have them here in Idaho, so I haven't haven't really had anything like that here. So, um, is there any risk of a wolf spider bite? Um, I I am at risk of getting bitten by her, but um, the venom, as far as I have researched, is not significantly harmful to humans. Um, wolf spiders are mostly out hunting actively and trying to you know, go find prey. Their, their venom, from what I've read, is not, you know, super significant to humans. It's like I've said, you know, black widow spiders and um, brown recluses are the only ones that are medically significant and recognized in the U.S., so I, I haven't really worried about it that much. She's not really wanting to cooperate, but that's all right. They don't always do what you want, right? Have you ever been bitten by things you were handling? Um, I did get bitten um, uh, by a toe biter in one of my episodes. You can watch that one. It's collecting aquatic insects. And that was very painful. I'm trying to think if I still have a scar here. I can't see it, but it was extremely painful. A toe biter. You'll have to watch that. Um, maybe I can put that link at the end of the video. Um, let's see here. 
another question. How do you catch a black widow spider off its web? I would use something like, um, I would use maybe like a water bottle or something and a stick. You know, you don't really want to get your hands next to it. You don't want to be handling it because you're not going to get bit if you don't touch it. Um, so maybe using like a plastic bottle um, and sticking that up. Well, let me show you. So um, if I had a black widow spider, um, I might, you know, stick it near the web and then I'll use a stick or something to try and scare her into the bottle. You know, you're going to try and coax her into the bottle. And then um, obviously you don't want to have water in there <laughs> when you're doing it. Speaking of which, I need a drink. I get talking for a long time. Mm -hmm. All right. Have you ever kept salticids? So salticids are jumping spiders. I've kept jumping spiders before as pets, and they can get really big. You, they, they eat a ton, and they will just keep eating and keep growing and getting bigger. Um, I've had them at pets a, as pets a couple of times. I think they're cute. I actually like um, jumping spiders. I think they're very cool. Um, so they're pretty good pets. Those are good ones that you could um, that you could use. Um, what kind of spiders form social colonies? As far as I have researched, um, there's not. I haven't really researched any that actually will um, form these large social colonies. Now I could be wrong about this, and I haven't done a ton of research on it. But I haven't heard about that that much. For the most part, I can say that generally about spiders, they are not. Um, super social creatures, um, other than, you know, the basics of finding a mate and taking care of their babies, you know, some of them will take care of their babies and carry them on their back um, for weeks. Let's see if we can get a better shot of Ghost here. She's moving and I'm trying to run the camera at the same time. Trying to figure out where I'm at. There we go. See if we can get her turned a better direction. Oh, she jumped on that one. <laughs> get this focused again. All right, let's see if there's any more questions. I think we're about to. Um, about to wrap things up. Let's see here. What's an underrated bug people in North America should be cautious of? I would definitely say toe biters are a big one, and also mosquitoes. I mean, may, maybe to most people, to me, I always hear lots of things about mosquitoes, but a lot of people probably don't. Mosquitoes really are an issue. They are just a huge issue in the United States. I think people don't really realize all the diseases that they transfer cause thousands and thousands of deaths across the world. If we really only understood um how, how dangerous they are and the diseases that they spread. And, you know, it's not really the mosquitoes' fault, but they're transmitting diseases all the time. So um, that creates a lot of issues. I think we'll switch back to this camera and we'll wrap up these questions. Just in line, we'll see what she does. She's, she's a little, uh, she has gotten a lot faster and changed as the weather has changed. She's a lot, um, she's moving around a lot faster and she's a little bit crazier these days. So um, when it was the winter, she was really chill and she was very slow and cautious. But now she's a little bit more adventurous. I think she can feel that heat and it's making a big difference for her. So maybe she'll even want to jump on the phone. We'll see, you guys. Um, okay. How do you catch a spider if it's fast or can jump? Um, what I would do with a spider that is fast or jumping is I would get a net, I would get a sweeping net, and then I would throw it over it. But you want to be really careful. You don't want to smash it. Um, but having a sweeping net could be good because then you could throw it on top of it, and it's most likely going to climb up into the net. And I'm, I'm really sorry, guys, about the wind. It's crazy here. <laughs> My wife was driving on the highway, and uh, tons of cars had, like, basically gotten in accidents and stuff because there was so much dust blowing around that you couldn't even see in front of you. She could not see the road at all. It was, it's a crazy day today, but the show must go on, right? <laughs> okay, well, that's all the questions I'm seeing, you guys. I hope you guys will tune in and join us uh, next week. You guys will get to meet Natasha, the Black Widow, 
And uh, I'm excited to let you guys meet her and learn about uh, this other group of spiders that are medically significant and uh, maybe do something uh, to, uh, to be stupid, I guess. But I really do believe that spiders are not that evil. I don't think they will intentionally hurt you. Uh, for the most part, they are pretty well harmless to us as humans. They're very beneficial and great organisms. So make sure that if you guys uh, are interested... Make sure and send me an email if you are interested in learning about opportunities of getting a degree with uh, the University of Idaho in entomology. And I'd love to talk to you about that. Make sure and like and subscribe to the channel and tune in next week where we will have an awesome adventure together. So thank you guys.